Hello, my name is Kat, and last week in a live show I outlined a story about a warlock who falls in love with a gladiator, and today I want to share what I have outlined thus far as an example to my 27 chapter story structure method. First, an announcement. I'm going to do another live show. Once again, it will be on a Tuesday, February 19th this time, and also once again it will be at 5 p.m. Pacific time. So I apologize to those of you who are busy or sleeping at that time. And what we will be doing in this live show is continuing the outlining process on this story. Last week we only had enough time to outline the first half of the story, so I would like to outline the second half. Now, something I did not anticipate has happened. I went into the live show thinking that we would outline something purely for example purposes, and you know, it'd probably be pretty bad, and, but it would get the job done. But afterwards, when I rewatched that part of the live show so I could write everything down, I found myself really liking the story, and then I couldn't stop thinking about it, and my brain just kept on going, Gladiators! Warlocks! Blah! That's exactly what my brain is like. So I wrote everything down and in my notes they were just Warlock and Gladiator. I didn't name the characters because once you name them you start to get attached and then you want to keep them and take them home and feed them and take them for walks. So I didn't name them. So they were just Warlock and Gladiator. But then that got shortened to W and G because who has time to type out full words these days? We live in a fast-paced world, kids. Fast-paced. So they were W and G. And then I started to ponder if maybe their names would start with a W and a G. And then I came up with the names Wesley and Gwen. And that's how I named them. And now I want to keep them. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to write the story for Camp NaNoWriMo. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's talk outline. I use a 9 block, 27 chapter outline that fits within a 3 act structure to help me guide my stories, and I talk a lot more about this uh, 27 chapter outline here in this video, which I definitely recommend watching because this video that I'm filming right now will make a lot more sense having watched this video. But yeah, I explain in more detail the 27 chapter outline there. However, there is not a solid example of this outline structure in use until right now. Cause that's what I'm about to do! Pay attention. So chapter one is the introduction, where we introduce the world and our main characters. This story is set in a world in which people with powers, the warlocks, are the upper class. The royal family, warlocks. Everyone in government, warlocks. They have the powers, so they make the rules, and naturally the rules heavily favor those with powers. People who don't have powers, which is the majority of the population, they are the lower class. They are the 99%. They do what they can to get by. And for some of them who are desperate enough, this means training to become a gladiator. There's no TV in this world, so people gotta stay entertained somehow, and watching poor people beat each other to death is as close to reality TV as it gets in this world. So being a gladiator is pretty bad, but the one upside is the huge amount of prize money you get if you win. Our leading male character, Wesley, is a warlock prince. Actually, I'm not sure if he's a prince or just like the son of an important person because we didn't do a lot of world building so I don't know if there's like a king or a president or a tyrant. Just keep in mind that nothing I tell you right now is set in stone. This is the first draft of an outline, so many, many things can change over the course of the writing and outlining of the story. Anyway, Wesley is a warlock of a rich family that wants to marry him off to a nice warlock girl. But Wesley does not want to get married, so he has been avoiding and running away from every sort of blind date marriage meeting his parents have set up for him. Our main female character, 
Gwen has been training to become a gladiator for years. Her mother is sick and needs expensive medicine to get better, and her father, a gladiator, is now in prison because he was caught stealing aforementioned expensive medicine when they could no longer afford it. Gwen is an only child, so it's all up to her to enter herself into the gladiator arena, win the prize money, bail her dad out of jail, and buy her mom's really expensive medicine. In the introduction chapter, Wesley and Gwen meet. Wesley is supposed to attend a marriage meeting, but like all the other meetings in the past, he runs away and goes off to the market to kind of stay undercover for a few hours. In the market, he accidentally pisses off a couple of tough guys and they start beating him up. Meanwhile, Gwen is shopping in the market when she sees a fight start to break out. There are these two big guys picking on some scrawny teenager, those jerks. So she beats them up. This is how she beats them up. No, she's much more talented than I am with the punching. She beats them up and saves Wesley, and afterwards they talk and connect a little bit, but then they part ways, never to see each other again. Or so they think. After the introduction, we have the inciting incident. As punishment for bailing on the most recent marriage meeting, Wesley has to take his potential fiancé on a date to the arena. Naturally, Gwen is scheduled to fight on the same night. So there she is, fighting for her life, and when her opponent gets the upper hand and is about to deliver the fatal blow, Wesley intervenes and confuses the opponent just long enough for Gwen to get the upper hand and win the match. And then we have the immediate effect of this inciting incident, and that is that Wesley is quite surprised by his own actions. He's not really sure why he interfered, especially when interfering in the games is like a huge no-no because people bet on these and it's just, it's bad news. He's gonna get in a lot of trouble if he gets caught, but it's a good thing he didn't get caught. That's what he thinks until he looks over and his fiance just smiles at him and says, I saw that. Down in the arena, the fight is over, but instead of being given her prize money, Gwen is arrested. They don't know what she did or how she did it, but everyone saw that she was about to die, and then she didn't. So she has somehow cheated, and she needs to be punished for that. And now we move into the reaction. The potential fiancé is blackmailing Wesley. Marry me, or I'll turn you in, and you can die like that gladiator girl is going to. Because Gwen has totally been sentenced to death. They're going to feed her to the dragons in the morning, and it's just going to go downhill from there. But no, not if Wes can help it. He has a crazy idea, but it's really his only chance to get out of his troubles and also help Gwen get out of her troubles. So he goes on a mission to break Gwen out of jail. Over in the prison, Gwen is super close to breaking out of jail herself when she overhears the guards arresting Wesley as he tries to save her. So she quickly breaks out of jail, once again saves Wesley, and together they run off escaping into the city. At this point, it should be noted that Gwen has no idea who Wesley is or that he has powers. Next, we enter the action chapter. After running around in the city for a while, they realize that there's no way to escape through the gates. They're way too heavily guarded, but there might be a way to escape over the gates. Via dragon, perhaps? It's their only option. So together, they escape on a dragon named Cat, which wasn't my idea, but I approve. They flee the city and make it out to the wilderness, and the dragon turns on them because it's a freaking dragon, and now that it's far away from the city, the magic that was keeping it tame is gone. After escaping the city and fighting the dragon, we enter the consequence chapter. Here they are, free from their most pressing troubles from back home, but now they have a whole new set of wilderness-related problems. They wander around this desert apocalypse apocalyptic wasteland, struggling and fighting to stay alive against nature. Very much a what have I gotten myself into sort of thing. Now we enter the pressure chapter. Things are getting worse. Problems are escalating. They cannot survive out here on their own for much longer. And then up ahead they see a light and they rush towards it and meet up with a vaguely suspicious traveling merchant group. After the chapter of pressure, we have the pinch or the plot twist. Gwen and Wesley join up with the merchant group because even though they seem a little bit suspicious, it's still the best chance they have at survival right now. So they join 
up with the merchant group and also something else happens I don't know what exactly but Wesley is forced to show his powers and Gwen is subsequently shocked by this and feels betrayed she didn't know he was a warlock plot twist and now we enter the push chapter which is the last chapter of the first act and kind of the push or the break into act two Gwen is trying to reconcile her feelings for Wesley now that she knows he is a warlock that really changes things between them they are from such different social classes that really she shouldn't even be speaking to him but then they arrive at a new city a city that doesn't have strict class systems between magical and non-magical people. A city in which they can be together. Gwen and Wesley are pushed into this new world where a relationship between them is actually possible. And this is where all the fun romance stuff happens. We start off Act 2 with the new chapter. Here is Wesley and Gwen exploring this new world of this new city and the new world of their relationship together. And we also have the fun and games chapter. This is where their relationship is really going well. Haven't really worked out the details, it's just, it's all very cute stuff. Trust me. After we have our fun and games, we move into the chapter in which we have a contrast with the old world. Even though this new city doesn't have like a strict class system separating the magical and non-magical people, there is still a divide there. The warlocks have more money and more power and more privilege and everyone else is second class compared to them. In this chapter, Wesley and Gwen are reminded of why they shouldn't be together. They have to go back home eventually and when they do, they both know that their relationship cannot continue. Wesley will have to go be married off to some warlock girl, and Gwen will have to face her punishment, either death or being thrown back into the arena. So we enter the build-up chapter. Gwen and Wesley do not want to separate, the more they spend time together, the more it's going to hurt to say goodbye. This is where they start to realize that their feelings are a lot more powerful than they thought, and they really desperately want to stay together. And now we have the midpoint. Up until now, Gwen and Wesley have been staying with the merchant people and kind of helping out in their booth in the market to kind of pay their own way. But now the merchants are packing up and they're talking about leaving soon. Gwen and Wesley decide to stay with the merchant group until they circle around their trade route and end up back at their city in about a month. By then they figure they'll be ready to face their problems and also they want to spend that month together before they have to separate forever. So right now at the midpoint they are in love and they are happy together and this is totally a false victory cuz shit's about to go down after the midpoint we have the reversal the merchant crew leaves all right taking Wes with them but leaving Gwen behind and instead of moving forward to the new city they go back so they can blackmail the king and queen using Wesley as their bargaining chip a lot of blackmail in the story so far Gwen wakes up by herself the next morning and looks around for Wesley but all she finds are empty rooms. She realizes that everyone is gone and she has been left behind alone. And that is all that we have outlined so far. This is a romance, so I'm pretty sure Wesley and Gwen end up together. I have no clue how the second half of the story unfolds to get us to that point because that is what we are going to be figuring out in the live show next Tuesday. So yeah, if you are curious as to what is going to happen next, come to the live show and help me decide what happens next. Bring your ideas and probably some snacks because it's gonna be a long show. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you have a lovely night. I hope to see you at the live show on Tuesday. It's fun. I think I had fun at the last one. Um, so I hope you have fun too if you show up. That'd be cool. Anyways, I hope you guys have a great night and I will see you very soon. So, yeah, I just poked you in the face for no reason. Bye! <laughs>